Hello children, it's Grandma Carla and I am here tonight to read you a very special book. It is Sarah Plain and Tall and my granddaughter Hannah gave this book to me to read online uh, because she liked it so much and I love the story of Sarah Plain and Tall. And um, this is a little forward to the book that I will read. Their mother died the day after Caleb was born. Their house on the prairie is quiet now, and Papa doesn't sing anymore. Then Papa puts an ad in the paper asking for a wife, and he receives a letter from one Sarah Elizabeth Wheaton of Maine. Papa, Anna, and Caleb write back. Caleb asks if she sings. Sarah decides to come for a month. She writes, Papa, I will come by train. I will wear a yellow bonnet. I am plain and tall. And tell them I sing. Anna and Caleb wait and wonder, will Sarah be nice? Will she like them? Will she stay? All right, so we're going to read Sarah plain and tall. It's always been one of my very favorites. Did Mama sing every day? asked Caleb. Every single day? He sat close to the fire, his chin in his hand. It was dusk, and the dogs lay beside him on the warm hearthstones. Every single day, I told him for the second time this week. For the twentieth time this month, the hundredth time this year, and the past few years. And did Papa sing too? Yes, Papa sang too. Don't get so close, Caleb, you'll heat up. He pushed his chair back. It made a hollow scraping sound on the hearthstones, and the dog stirred. Lottie, small and black, wagged her tail and lifted her head. Nick slept on. I turned the bread dough over and over on the marble slab on the kitchen table. Well, Papa doesn't sing anymore, said Caleb very softly. A log broke apart and crackled in the fireplace. He looked at me. What did I look like when I was warm, born? You didn't have any clothes on, I told him. I know that, he said. You looked like this. I held the bread dough up in a round, pale ball. I had hair, said Caleb seriously. Not enough to talk about, I said. And she named me Caleb, he went on, filling in the old familiar story. I would have named you troublesome, I said, making Caleb smile. And Mama handed me to you and the yellow blanket and said... He waited for me to finish the story and said, I sighed. And Mama said, isn't he beautiful, Anna? And I was, Caleb finished. Caleb thought the story was over. And I didn't tell him what I really thought. He was homely and plain, and he had a terrible holler and a horrid smell. But these were not the worst of him. Mama died the next morning. That was the worst thing about Caleb. Isn't he beautiful, Anna? Her last words to me. I had gone to bed thinking how wretched he looked. And I forgot to say good night. I wiped my hands on my apron and I went to the window. Outside the prairie reached out and touched the places where the sky came down. The winter was nearly over. There were patches of snow and ice everywhere. I looked at the long dirt road that crawled across the plains, remembering the morning that Mama had died, cruel and sunny. They had come for her in a wagon and taken her away to be buried. And then the cousins and the aunts and the uncles had come and tried to fill up the house, but they couldn't. Slowly, one by one, they left, and then the days seemed long 
and dark, like winter days, even though it wasn't winter. And Papa didn't sing. Isn't he beautiful, Anna? No, Mama. It was hard to think of Caleb as beautiful. It took three whole days for me to love him, sitting in the chair by the fire, Papa washing up the supper dishes, Caleb's tiny, tiny hand brushing my cheek, and a smile. It was a smile, I know. Can you remember her songs, asked Caleb, Mama's songs? I turned from the window. No, only that she sang about flowers and birds, sometimes about the moon at night time. Caleb reached down and touched Lottie's head. Maybe, he said in a voice low, if you remember the songs, then I might remember her too. My eyes widened and tears came. Then the door opened and the wind blew in with Papa and I went to stir the stew. Papa put his arms around me and put his nose in my hair. Nice soapy smell, that stew, he said. I laughed. That's my hair. Caleb came over and threw his arms around Papa's neck and hung down as, as Papa swung him back and forth and the dog sat up. Cold in town, said Papa, and Jack was feisty. Jack was Papa's horse that he'd raised from a colt. Rascal, murmured Papa, smiling, because no matter what Jack did, Papa loved him. I spooned up the stew and lighted the oil lamp, and we ate with the dogs crowding under the table, hoping for spills or handouts. Papa might not have told us about Sarah that night if Caleb hadn't asked him the question. After the dishes were cleared and washed and Papa was filling the tin pail with ashes, Caleb spoke up. It wasn't a question, really. You don't sing anymore, he said. He said it harshly, not because he meant to, but because he had been thinking of it for so long. Why? he asked more gently. Slowly, Papa straightened up. There was a long silence, and the dogs looked up, wondering at it. I've forgotten the old songs, said Papa quietly. He sat down. But maybe there's a way to remember them. He looked up at us. How? asked Caleb eagerly. Papa leaned back in the chair. I've placed an advertisement in the newspapers for help. You mean a housekeeper, I asked, surprised. Caleb and I looked at each other and burst out laughing, remembering Hilly, our old housekeeper. She was round and slow and shuffling. She snored in, the light whistle, in a light whistle at night, like a tea kettle, and let the fire go out. No, said Papa slowly. Not a housekeeper, he paused. A wife. Caleb stared at Papa. A wife? You mean a mother? Nick slid his face into Papa's lap and Papa stroked his ears. That too, said Papa, like Maggie. Matthew, our neighbor to the south, had written to ask for a wife and a mother for his children. And Maggie had come from Tennessee. Her hair was the color of turnips. And she laughed. Papa reached into his pocket and unfolded a letter written on white paper. And I have received an answer, Papa read to us. Dear Mr. Jacob Whitting, I am Sarah Wheaton from Maine, as you will see from my letter. I am answering your advertisement. I have never been married, though I have been asked I have lived with an older brother, William, who is about to be married. His wife-to-be is young and energetic. I have always loved to live by the sea, but at this time I feel a move is necessary. And the truth is, the sea is as far east as I can go. My choice, as you see, is limited. This should not be taken as an insult. I am strong and I work hard, and I'm willing to travel. 
but I am not mild-mannered. If you should still care to write, I would be interested in your children and about where you live and you. Very truly yours, Sarah Elizabeth Wheaton. P.S. Do you have opinions on cats? I have one. No one spoke when Papa finished the letter. He kept looking at it in his hands, reading it over to himself. Finally, I turned my head a bit to sneak a look at Caleb. He was smiling, and I smiled too. One thing, I said in the quiet of the room. What's that? asked Papa. Looking up, I put my arm around Caleb. Ask her if she sings, I said. This is Grandma Carla, and that was chapter one of Sarah, plain and tall. And I love you.